Hey everyone, I wanted to tell you um, how to do one of these roller coaster type of energy problems I was mentioning. Uh, so just take a look at this roller coaster track here. Um, just the basics to kind of uh, talk about getting up to point A and then B, C, and D. So first, obviously, the motor has to apply some work, which is basically, it is lifting, so the force is actually M times G, it's the weight. So it's lifting the weight of the coaster and the people to the top, and that's the distance. Once it gets to the top, it has all its potential energy, gravitational, which is MGH. These two are exactly the same. As the coaster goes down the track, about halfway down, it would be half potential, half kinetic. Potential would decrease, kinetic would increase. Down here at B, it would be all kinetic energy. Um, one half mv squared at the bottom and then obviously it would start to lose kinetic gain potential as it moves through the coaster so to do a problem like this uh, the first thing is you would need some additional information here uh, things like gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram in this problem let's say that the mass of the roller coaster car was 800 kilograms and then the height at a is 35 meters high, B is zero meters high, C is 20 meters high, and D is 10 meters high. We're actually not gonna even use D in the problem I'm gonna show you. So these are the typ typical uh, type of questions that you'd be asked. So for example, how much work is done on the car to lift it to position A? So like I said before, to get to position A here at the top, there has to be work done, force times distance, or basically you're calculating the potential energy. So you would take 800, multiply by 10, multiply by 35, and you get 280,000 joules of energy. What about if you wanted to calculate the speed at B? Well, one of the things you have to realize is the potential energy at A equals the kinetic energy of B. That means all of this potential energy at A would turn to all kinetic at the lowest point at B. So again, you would have kinetic energy 1 half mv squared. 28,000 joules would equal 1 half, because the 28,000 joules came from up here, 1 half times 800 times v squared. Take half of 800. Divide both sides by 400, you'll have 700 equals v squared. Take the square root of both sides, and the speed is about 26.5 meters per second at point B. What if you wanted to calculate the potential energy at C? That means, let's say you're trying to figure out what the, kinetic, the potential energy at C is, and also what the speed at C would be. So again, You'd want to first calculate what the potential energy is, um, 800 times 10 times 20, so it'd be 160,000 joules. And then if you wanted to calculate the kinetic energy at C, you would just take the total energy, the 28,000, and subtract the potential energy because the other would half would be kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy at C would be 120,000 joules. And then finally, if you wanted to calculate the speed at C, you would take that 120,000 joules time uh, equals one half 800 V squared, going through the same process, half of 800, and then take the square root, um, divide by 400 square root of both sides, and you'll get 17.3 meters per second. So I just wanted to kind of go through an example problem like you'll see on the Google form.